We've seen it throughout the years that Google's really pushing towards automation, especially with smart campaigns and performance max. Now, even though we have those campaigns, we still have the ability to manually create our own. Even though we still have that ability, we don't have as much control as we used to. Because also over the past few years, Google has made a lot of tweaks within the campaign settings and how we can actually target users. So our ads are actually being shown to more people than most of us realize. So in this video, I'll show you the four areas I like to look at most for the campaigns I typically set up to really show you where you should be looking so you have a better understanding of where your ads are actually showing. The first place where Google will try to sneak in a way for them to expand upon your targeting options, at least the first one I want to talk about, happens during the campaign setup. So we're going to start with a search campaign. Let me just pick a draft that we are already working on. It's starting on this page because it is a draft. You would go through your campaign objectives and all that stuff. But when we get to the part of campaign settings, or at least when you get to this part when you're setting up a search campaign, you should notice the campaign network settings. Now by default, when you're creating a search campaign nowadays, both of these boxes are checked. And if you're fairly new to Google Ads, I will tell you right now, these two boxes will definitely expand your reach and the intent on these settings are completely different than someone actually going to google.com and searching for something. One that we typically uncheck all the time is the display network. And of course, Google's going to want you to put this on because more chances for someone to click on your ad. More money for Google. But the intent between display and search is completely different. When someone goes to google.com and they're actively searching for something, they're most likely going to be more qualified and more interested, I should say, in what you're trying to offer them. Google's display network, the massive array of websites, mobile apps, YouTube channels, is not as intent focused because the users weren't searching for something. You're getting in front of them on a particular YouTube channel, on ESPN, on the New York Times, when they're looking at other content. And you're hoping to disrupt that experience with an ad. So yes, Google can take your search ads, make them look kind of like a display ad. It's not going to be as pretty as your typical image ads, but that will happen automatically if you ignore your network settings within a search campaign and leave the Google Display Network on. Again, this is one that we always turn off. If we want to run display, we will create a separate dedicated display campaign. Now the other network option is including the Google Search Partners. And this is one I typically leave on because first, it's at least still search. So search partners are other websites that use Google search to power their own search functionality. Let me show you one example. Who's old enough to remember this website when it used to be called Ask Jeeves? So ask.com is still around. And I just typed in a search term for baseball cases. We see shopping results. We see some text ads. But if I highlight over one of the headlines, if you look at what I'm highlighting down below, telling me where the link is going to go, we see it says google.com. There's the GCLID. So these are Google ads. Ask.com is using Google to power their own search functionality. There are so many other websites like this. I show you many more examples in our video dedicated to search partners. You can check that out here. But all of these sites are rolled in to Google search partners. And we typically see differences in performance. I can't say all the time, but a majority of the time, click the rate is much lower on search partners. And then depending on the account, we definitely see differences in cost per conversion numbers. Sometimes the search network is way better than google.com. Other times we see it be much more expensive. You can look at this information, pulling up a client account this time by going to segment when you're in the campaign view and then choose network. So we see in this particular account, at least for these three campaigns on the screen right now, click through rate is much lower. This month we haven't gotten any conversions yet, but the ad spend is so low. So we leave it on because actually in this account, cost per conversion overall tends to be lower. I said we turn off the display network for all of our search campaigns, but if you are running display along search, you'll be able to see the network here as well. So if you do leave these boxes checked, it's just one reason why your ads could be showing to more people than you realize. Let me click back to the main campaign view. And the second way that your ads could be showing to more people than you think will be through YouTube campaigns. I don't have a draft ready, so I'll have to create a new one. Let's start a new campaign. And I want to start on the campaign objective. Again, I said this was for video campaigns. So if you're looking to create a video action campaign, a campaign with the objective of sales, leads, and website traffic, we have lost more control within this particular campaign setup. I'll show you why. Let's just stick with website traffic. Skip the conversion part and choose video, and then we'll click continue. Once again, I'm gonna skip everything and go straight to networks because the video side is different. A lot of people think video campaigns in Google are just YouTube. And there's a reason why they called them video campaigns a long time ago, because your video ads can show up on a lot more places than just YouTube. 
So we used to be able to uncheck this box. We already talked about the display network on the search setup. Well, your video ads can also show up on the same Google display network and we can no longer uncheck this box. And it says right here on the bottom, besides YouTube, any video campaign using a sales, leads, or website traffic campaign objective will now also appear on the sites and the apps that are part of Google's display network that fits within what you have chosen for your targeting options within the campaign settings. So just like search, it's another way that Google is expanding the reach and you're losing some of the specificity that you may think that you're getting. Now sticking with the same video action campaign objectives, if we scroll down to the targeting options and click on advanced settings, it's also telling us that you can no longer add content targeting to video campaigns. So if you do want to shut off the display network and add in content targeting to help narrow the focus of your target audience or who you're trying to reach, we recommend creating a video campaign without a goals guidance. And that is a particular campaign objective. But even with that objective, there are some limitations. Let me show you. Okay, I've gone back, changed it to without a goals guidance, keep it as video, choose your subtype, and I'll click continue. I'm going to go straight to networks again. Here, we get the ability to uncheck the display network. So now we know our ads will appear just on Google. And this is the setting we prefer now for most of our clients running video campaigns, unless they need specific features like adding a shopping feed, because this one gives us more control. Now let's look at another way that Google is trying to expand your reach beyond the targeting that you have selected. In our account, I'm in the audience manager. You can find that by going to tools and settings, and it's the first option right now under shared library. We see the second warning is letting us know since we're already past the date that similar segments are going away, or I should say they have gone away. They have been removed from this particular account. And if any of your campaigns or ad groups were using similar segments, they've been replaced with optimized targeting or audience expansion. Depends on what campaign type you're using. So if we're looking to create another campaign, I pulled open a display campaign and I already dropped down to the targeting options and we do have some targeting options selected right below the targeting that we have selected, we see a section for optimized targeting on. If we open this up, optimized targeting is one of the options that has replaced similar segments in certain campaign types. Any display, video action, or discovery campaigns, even though discovery campaigns are going away, that have used similar segments are automatically opted into this targeting. But this particular campaign isn't using similar segments. So when we're building a campaign, once you start to add certain audience targets, Google's going to automatically opt you into optimized targeting. We have found that this greatly expands your reach well beyond the targeting that you have selected. And I've only used this in a few accounts. Most of the time we turn it off, but I've only seen optimized targeting, quote unquote, work decently within one client account. The rest of the time it brings conversions, but it's all junk. Now I know I told you the other option is audience expansion. That is only available for video campaigns using the objectives of either product and brand consideration or brand awareness and reach. Just like optimized targeting, audience expansion will replace similar segments if you are using it in the campaign. And then Google will try to recommend that you use audience expansion when trying to create new campaigns with those objectives. It's just another way where Google's making the targeting expansion much greater than what you're actually going after. So it's an easy way to spend a lot more money than you want to and reach an audience that we have typically seen be not as qualified and not as relevant. If you want to learn more about the process of similar segments going away, you could check out this video here. But if you're just interested in learning about optimized targeting, we have a more focused video on that topic and you could check that video out here. And now onto the last thing I want to talk about, which I'm sure by now you already know has impacted your accounts, and that will be the changes of match types. The simplest way I could put it is that match types really don't work the way they used to anymore. They have changed several times over the years. First, many years ago, Google decided to add close variant matching, which we can see is showing up in this particular search terms report. Close variant matching was actually pretty helpful when it first came out. It helped you connect with people misspelling your keywords so you didn't have to add all of those misspellings as target keywords within your account. And besides misspellings, just other little teeny tiny nuances. But then match types have changed a few times even after that. So if we look at this keyword I'm highlighting here, exact match for commercial office cleaners near me. How exact match used to work was that our ads would only show up if it was those five words in that exact order, no other keywords before, in the middle, or after the keyword phrase. But if we look at the actual search term in the column all the way to the left, Google's now showing our ads. If anyone just types in 
office cleaners. Now someone looking for commercial office cleaning is much more specific than overall office cleaners. And the same thing that we're seeing with some of our phrase match keywords as well. Look at this one, second one from the top, targeting the keyword of ABM Industries. But the actual search term was just ABM. ABM could stand for a bunch of things. Most familiar to me is account-based marketing. That is completely not what this account is trying to go after. So now we need to be much more proactive with our negative keyword research with whatever search term Google still shows us in order to try to better reach our target audience. So because of these match type changes and match types aren't as specific as they used to be, we've now seen our ads showing in many of our accounts to users who don't fit the persona we're actually trying to go after. You can also combine this scenario with Google really pushing broad match. We have seen broad match work well in certain cases, especially when audiences are layered on. But with the changes to match types, Google really pushing broad, Google really pushing performance max, our ads are just flat out getting shown to many more people than we ideally want to. So really keep an eye on your search term reports from the video side, your placement reports, and make it a much more routine task to go in and add exclusions or negative keywords or audiences. I don't see Google reversing their decisions on anything I've talked about in this video ever. So it's always important to know what your campaign settings can do and how the targeting options actually work in a variety of different campaign types. So you know how to control it as best as possible to still try to get the best performance you can out of Google ads. I know I didn't cover all the ways that Google can try to expand your reach beyond your current targeting options, but these are the places I always look at first. If you have any other options that you think are important to share with the paid media community, please let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.